two, three, four, the hardest part of the ring. It's the hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you go over the top rope and you bang your head on the ring apron. Don't do that. That's when you feel like a big dope. Cause they're the worst bumps you can be taking. Oh, it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Hey, double claps. What are we doing, Bob Squad? It's the Hulu edition of Monday Night Raw. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Ba da ba da. Whoa. Yay, yay. What's going on? It is the hardest part of the ring, you wild savages, your rabid dogs, frothing at the mouth, chomping at the bit, drool dribbling down your chins. I'm recording this a little bit late, and I'm trying to be as courteous to my neighbor as I possibly can. So if I feel, if it feels a little somber, if it feels a little NPR-ish, if it feels a little bit like a TED Talk, forgive me. Because that way of doing stuff sucks, and it's for pussies. But, <laughs> Jesus, Bob, that's a new one for the, the podcast. But that's the way I need to do it, just to be a nice guy, because I like to be a nice person. I like to lead by example, Bob Squad. That's what I like to do. I like to lead by example and be the best Bob I can be, doing stuff, saying things, jumping off the walls, bouncing off the ceiling, rubbing salt in a wound, throwing gas on a fire, add an insult to injury, like a champ, like an animal, like a beast, like a savage, like a warrior, like a madman, like a jackhammer, like a steamroller, like a firecracker, like a runaway freight train. Squeezing the lemon daddies, stopping on a dime. Don't know where we're going, but we are making good time. Are we ready for the August 9th edition of Monday Night Raw? Probably not, but it's coming at us anyway in the Hulu edition. So if I miss anything, I didn't see it. Nothing with Alexa and Eva Marie or Dewdrop has ever made Hulu. I want to make that point because nothing with Alexa has ever not made Hulu for the last several years. Uh, especially the Alexa, anything with the Alexa the Fiend or in, and then Alexa Lily, whatever. Until not until Alexa interacted with Eva Marie and then Dewdrop has she not made Hulu. Um, and I don't think that's a reflection on Alexa being on any kind of doghouse or whatever. I think it's just uh, I don't know. I just don't know if Eva Marie and Dewdrop is taken off or is as high a priority as anything else going on in the show. Because we saw Sheamus and Ricochet on this show, and only in the last two weeks have it, has any U.S. title stuff really made it. And the Omos AJ Tag Team Champions only really make it when they're involved with Riddle somehow, as is the case this week. Okie dokie. Let's move on. Oh, Jackson Riker I've never seen. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, I know who he is, but uh, you know what I'm saying. As far as making Hulu and not anything 24-7, almost never does, unless it happens to be interfering with something else. Any women's angle, that is not the title. The single Raw women's title never makes Hulu. Okay. So Raw women's tag team champions, unless one of them is also the Raw champion, and they're doing the forced tag team champion, forced partner, but they hate each other thing they do too much. Never see it. Are you ready to start the show? Of course you're not. But you know what else we weren't ready for? We weren't ready for the irresistible force meeting the immovable object, cutting the electricity with a knife in front of 93,173 people to Pontiac Silverdome in uh, Pontiac, Michigan in 1987, March 23rd, 24th, something like that. March 9th, maybe it was a little earlier, it was like a night, whatever it was. Because uh, you know what happened there? I'll just tell you, Bob Squad, I ain't going to make you wait. Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant, that's how we opened the show. With Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant and then uh, some other uh, legends as well are in the opening. To remind us all how there will never be new stars ever again. I need to put a turn of light on. I can't see my notes. I have reached the age, Bob Squad, where I need to put on my glasses so I can look underneath them to see stuff. I don't understand that. For some reason, that works better than just not wearing my glasses and staring at stuff. Don't know why. Randy Orton returns and he is back. You know what we gotta stop doing? I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you, Bob Squad. This is so hacky. There's two motorcycles going on around outside my apartment. I live by the freeway. Uh, can we stop? The Exorcist is 40 years old, probably. I'm not looking it up. Yeah, I'm close. Let's say it's 40 years old, which would make it 81, 80. Can we stop whenever anyone returns with he, she, they going, he's back? There's, there's always a shitty announcer on every television show, not just Raw. I'm not going to... 
every television show, every lazy sitcom, which is every sitcom, all of this, can we stop doing that? Every bad game show, reality show host, every lazy newscaster, everyone. Can we stop with that? It, it gets to the point where people don't even know what it's from. Like, uh, that quickly happened, I think, with Office Space and, like, Case of the Mondays or Did You Get the Memo? Batman Begins was doing Did You Get the Memo in 05. Office Space came out in 98, 99? I think it was 98. Like, do you, do you see how silly, like, at all? Like, no one's original anymore. Like, South Park did the Gingers of No Souls, and they did the Sarah Jessica Parker looks like a horse thing, which I don't think she does. She's a lovely woman. That's very not, that's not nice. For, she doesn't look like a horse. That's just something they said once to be, to be them in, like, the mid-2000s, and people are still saying it as if they wrote it. It's lazy. It's hacky. Give it up. Stop saying he's back. You sound like an ass. Anyway, Randy Orton is back. And he says hello pretty much before um, he gets, he's, and then he gets interrupted by the bro riddle music. Riddle interrupts him. Um, I don't know if this is worth mentioning, but I will. I will waste your time. I apologize. So Randy Orton said, I guess I have to say welcome to Monday Night Raw. I didn't really notice this, but I guess everyone who does the opening promo says welcome to Monday Night Raw. I know Stephanie McMahon always does. Um, but maybe, I bet you Drew probably said it a lot over the last year, and I just didn't notice because there were no people there to cheer, but he had to say it. I think that's like they think welcome to Monday Night Raw is their live from New York at Saturday night. I think that's what they think it is. I, I think that's becoming a thing now. Like, oh, so every... So no wrestler can have any personality that anyone who goes first has to say the thing. Like pointing at the sign or holding up your championship next to the person you're facing off with. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Wrestling sucks, man. I tell you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, R Riddle comes out and tells Randy Orton that when he was a kid, his stepdad left him. What? That really happened. That made no sense, and that was really sad. And then Randy Orton says, I won't be your friend. And that was also really sad. Um, which So they did a bunch of stuff no one wanted to hear or see. And then AJ Styles and Omos came out. Uh, Randy Orton failed to give the RKO to Omos. But, um, but he agreed to wrestle AJ later. Um, this is the first of two times tonight you will see the heel challenge to babyface. Why? I don't know. No one cares. And Riddle also does a failed attempt on Omos. And Omos chokeslams Riddle on his side sloppily. Um, that would have been praised when I was uh, in training at WXW. <laughs> when I In the early 2000s in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Just dropped the smaller guy sloppily and badly. As long as you do it very hard, it, it, you're praised and rewarded for it. Bitter Bobby, I'm having a bad day, guys. I think. Okay. Um, so that sets up Randy Orton and AJ Styles for the main event. And if you're watching on regular TV or you're there in a live audience, that event takes place six days after this promo. Uh, Baron Corbin is on this show, even though he's usually a SmackDown guy. He is talking to an Irish guy, and Corbin says he's homeless. He's not. Um, and that Jinder Mahal... Paid him to, or offered him money if he beats Drew McIntyre on this show tonight. Drew McIntyre is also talking to us. That is this Irish, the same Irish guy. This Irish guy gets around. And uh, Drew McIntyre tells a sad story about his mom having cancer. And the sword is named Angela after his mom. Hey, what an entertaining show, guys. Making everyone feel happy today. And then Drew also says Baron Corbin once years ago bragged about beating up a homeless guy and stealing a small dog. What he did with the dog, we do not know. Hope that's not true. This is such a sad show. I'm not even going to blame myself for this sad, depressing review. They did a sad, depressing show. This isn't on me, Bob Squad. It's not on me. <laughs> Corbin and Drew have a match with moves. Match gets 17 million stars. Don't question the system. Uh, we do this now. We don't just do this in Thunderdome. We just do this in wrestling in front of people now. Before Corbin, during the match, Corbin takes a microphone and pleads to not get hit. Or 
Well, Corbin is pleading, and Drew takes the microphone, excuse me, and says, well, how much do you need to get back on your feet for just, just to help you out for a few days? And Corbin says $100,000. So this Corbin is doing a great job with this, by the way. He is doing this pathetic, I'm in so, so much trouble, but I need an absurd amount of money. So he's like a disingenuine GoFundMe guy. It's it's really interesting how they're doing this, and he's doing it really well. So I am entertained by this, and I have been entertained by the clips I've uh, the YouTube clips of SmackDown. I've seen him do it on. Uh, Drinder hits him with his finish anyway. Uh, right, Drew hits him with his finish. Excuse me, one, two, three. Like I said, seventeen million stars. Jinder Mahal and his two guys walk out, and then they walk back away because Drew McIntyre points a sword at them and threatens to kill them. Then Randy Orton is backstage, and Riddle approaches him on a scooter, and Randy tells him he won't be friends with him again, and then they have a music video about their friendship that didn't happen. Somehow that was prepared, including clips from stuff that happened that day, because that's the outfits they were in. That's a new sweatshirt Randy was wearing, or a new hoodie. Then there's a sad... Rand Riddle is looking sad with his resting his chin on the scooter. I'm not kidding. Ricochet wrestles Sheamus for the U.S. Championship. Sheamus beats the match gets 16 million stars. This is good, hard hitting. They incorporate the mask into the finish. Excuse me. They, they incorporate it into the finish. I just belched a little bit. I had some diet, Dr. Pepper. Which, I'm, by the way, let me just go off on a side tangent. By the way, um, diet, Dr. Pepper. If you haven't tried it, tastes just like regular Dr. Pepper. What you want to do is go to CocaCola.com/slash diet, Dr. Pepper. Type in a promo code Bob, and nothing happens. It's a waste of your time. Sheamus and Drew have a good match. Uh, so they sell it that Ricochet gets... He headbutts himself off Sheamus' steel mask. Road kick, one, two, three. Uh, this, I saw that that same night there was a gif going around of a springboard high cross body by Ricochet onto Sheamus where they both land on the announcer table. They don't break it, but they roll over it, which actually looked way more impressive than just breaking the thing. Cause that's the thing. I know that because sometimes these giant bodies land on a thing and it doesn't break. So we know it's not made of like, it's not made of paper, but sometimes when it does break, even though we know it's not made of paper because like grown men lean on it all night and do their job and there's TVs on it. And sometimes the damn thing doesn't break. Sometimes when it does break, it does look like it's made of paper, even though it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah, I don't think it does, like, the bump, the really danger. It doesn't do the danger justice just by the way it's constructed, if that makes sense. It's an odd-looking piece of furniture. How long has that thing been around? Uh, who cares? Um, probably the 90s. Anyway. Gotta be, because Vince, Vince did the cage bump in 99. Who cares? Okay. Uh, Seamus wins, and this is really an excuse for Damian Priest to come out and yell at Seamus. I'm going to talk about Damian Priest a lot on this. Thing. So are we to believe that the show was timed out badly because Damian would enter while Seamus was still in the ring celebrating? Because we have seen on, like, the old superstars, and this would be fun. It would be nice to see, like, occasionally, and thankfully they didn't overdo it. But somebody would, uh be maybe celebrating a little too long and they walk up the aisle and that's when the next wrestler enters and they kind of have like a mini stare down but that's it and that becomes something later but it just makes you think like what if kind of deal they used to do that really well and again they do it like once or twice a year and not every week but i know the raw, raw isn't guilty of overdoing this i'm not saying that's not fair either i'm just saying this was Odd because there's nowadays there's more music and pyro and graphics involved, so it would just seem odd that this would ever happen. But whatever. So Damien Priest has a problem with Seamus using his face protector to protect his broken nose. Somehow. Priest wrestles Morrison and Miz is in a wheelchair. So Priest and Morrison have a pretty good match. You know, they're having a raw match, but this is a raw match. We're really just waiting for, okay, what's the finish? What's the point of it all? Miz stands up out of his wheelchair and runs away. And Morrison looked perplexed for a second, so I'm wondering if they're doing a thing where maybe Miz lied to Morrison. Because Morrison's getting very popular, I think, with the moist water stuff. Um, Priest was threatening Miz. Uh, I think Priest was got sprayed with Miz, but then did his finish anyway to Morrison, which actually made perfect sense because it's just stupid water. Why would it distract him enough? But Priest wins one, two, three. Okay, whatever. Um... 
So Priest, who's the baby face, is mad at the guy wearing the face protector with the broken nose. And Priest, the baby face, Damien Priest, continually approaches and threatens the guy in a wheelchair who, up until this point, we were to assume he needed the wheelchair. Now we find out he doesn't. But how would Priest have known that's my knuckle cracking? How would Priest have known that? So he's the good guy. But the heel here, Morrison does cool moves and says fun things with the water thing and didn't cheat in this match. Can we just... He didn't cheat. He has the fun thing. And he does a cool flippy move here or there. I'm not saying he can't do a million cool flippy moves. I'm just saying he's smart enough and a good enough worker to know do one and not five because it'll, it'll mean something. You don't want to outshine, even though it is kind of outshining the baby face a little bit. It's not overkill, so I'll let give it a pass. Um, I don't know. It's ass backwards to me. And Drew the baby face is threatening to decapitate people. He's got a murder weapon that everyone just laughs about. Okay. So Priest then cuts a promo on Sheamus and calls Sheamus a bully. We should never use the word bully in pro wrestling. These are men. But anyway, he calls Sheamus a bully after he just bullied a bunch of people. That made no sense either. And then an Irish guy is talking to the tag team champions. And it's not weird because he's Irish. I'm just saying, I had a lot of momentum going, so I went with it. I forgot what the tag team champions said. They don't like Riddle and they don't like Randy. They're going to beat up Randy Orton tonight. Very good. Who cares? Bobby Lashley approaches uh, the ring with MVP. MVP talks for a little bit. Lashley says one or two things. They hate Goldberg. They're going to put the crap out of him. Very good. That's the main event. There's really nothing to say about that. It was uh, good work by MVP. And good on Lashley, too. I forget what he said, but I remember liking it. A blonde lady is talking to Rhea Ripley. Where has she been? The Irish guy's been doing all the work tonight. You wonder why you get 70 cents on a dollar. Okay, enough, Bob. That was not... I don't think that's really true, but... Okay. A blonde lady's talking to Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley says she's got to wrestle Nikki A.S.H. tonight. Oh, God. They are going to turn on Nikki. It's going to be awful. It's going to be... It's going to be not pretty. Rhea Ripley says, I have yet to see if Nikki A.S.H. has a dark side. Which means Rhea Ripley started watching Raw six weeks ago. But I know, if it didn't happen this week or in the last few weeks, it never happened. I understand the, the, the Raw mentality. and it, I know it's been that way a while, but in the last year it's been really bad with that. Really bad. It's not like it used to be like, oh, we'll forget that. I understand if, uh, remember Triple H wrestled Undertaker two WrestleManias in a row, 2011, 2012, and he also wrestled him in 2001 at WrestleMania, and they just never, during those two in a row, they never brought up the two, they never brought up the one match from 10 years ago, because it just had nothing to do with what was going on, and both characters were characters. Both characters were so far removed, so it just didn't make sense to bring it up. And you could kind of go, okay, it's been a decade. Yeah. Nikki Cross was with Nikki Cross on TV for like three years on Raw TV, and I know NXT a little longer. But I don't know. It's goofy. It make. It's not even that you're insulting my intelligence anymore. I've gotten over it. I've decided my intelligence is insulted and, and is long gone and should be for, for me continuing to watch the program. You're making your your, your main characters look stupid when you do. Okay, who okay. no one cares, but um We go to Nikki ASH. Who I don't remember if she was talking to a blonde lady or uh or the Irish guy. I honestly don't remember. But Nikki A.S.H. cuts the same promo for the fifth week in a row. It's it's gonna get bad, guys. Especially those paper pay per view live crowds traditionally have more of the hardcore fans. Like the the half raw fans or the casual raw fans are the ones who like it enough but don't get too caught up in it. 
um, or just have kids that like it, they're more likely to go to your Raws or even your live events too. Live events, uh, that sounds so gross. Um, but yeah, we'll call them live events just because they go, okay, we'll just go along with this. But pay-per-view, because pay-per-view tickets are going to be a little more expensive and they're going to be bought up quicker. So your hardcores are going to be in there. And your hardcores, that's when you get in since like that, that 2015 Royal Rumble um, or that 2014 Royal Rumble, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's when you get those type of bad reactions. Your WrestleMania 20 in MSG in 2004. That's when you get those kind of... Uh, I'm talking about the Lesnar-Goldberg thing way back when. Remember in 2004, we thought we'd never have to see Goldberg again? Okay. They have a match, Nikki A.S.H. Rhea and Nikki have a match with no heat. They like Rhea. They don't want to cheer her to kill Nikki. It, it didn't help Nikki that the match was even. Nikki really should have just got her ass kicked and Rhea would take the heel roll. And I don't mean the heel roll by, be, by, by cheating and be an asshole. Just deliver all that offense, put all that heat on Nikki, and just, just be there for the comeback. Um, that's all. But they had it be so 50 50 that no one. The, the biggest reaction of the match with, with no close second was Charlotte interfered, caused the DQ. Match gets. Um, Negative three billion stars. Don't question the system once again. Did I miss any matches for stars? I don't really know. Oh yeah, Priest and Morrison gets uh, six hundred stars, and Sheamus versus Ricochet, which happened right before it, got uh, six hundred and four stars. So again, don't they don't have time to explain this how the system works. So the DQ, Charlotte runs out and beats up the two of them, and that got the biggest reaction of the match. This match is in danger at SummerSlam calling it right now. This match is in danger of being shat upon. Elias is dead? What happened? The wrestler is alive. He just put his guitar in a fire in the woods and said Elias is dead and he ran away. So I don't know what that's about. I haven't seen him in months. Again, no Hulu. I don't think it matters. Charlotte Flair yells at a blonde lady. Randy Orton talks to an Irish guy. And then we have the main event. Orton versus H.A. Styles. And this is a great map back and forth. This is two brilliant workers. 41 and 43, 44 years old, whoever old AJ is. No, I hate no wasted motion because it's a cliche, but it is really true. Everything happens for a reason. Really good. Omos is a threat with just his presence. Randy Orton playing off Omos so that Omos doesn't have to actually do anything. And Orton just being so good at turning to Omos. And Omos doesn't have to do or really say no anything, just just react a little here and there. Uh, really good. Uh, Omos interferes. I think he pulled Orton's leg or something. And Riddle comes out and tries to choke out Omos. It doesn't work. The distraction allows AJ to fall into the RKO. One, two, three. Um, match gets uh, one, one billion stars. One billion. There's an even billion. And that's... Uh, Mainly due to the um, the way Orton played off Omos, so it gets one billion stars. One, two, three. Okay. Can we have any good moments, any happy moments here? Riddle is like, hey, Orton, I want to be buddies. Orton doesn't want to be buddies. Finally, Orton breaks down. He gives Riddle the hug. Right there, we should have seen the credits go off the air. We didn't. What we all want to see is Orton agree to temporarily be friends with Riddle and help him beat Omos and AJ for the, the tag things at SummerSlam. And then after a few months, when it runs its course, Orton will, will inevitably turn, and, and everyone knows that. But it'll be a question of when and not if. It's like the money in the bank cash. In. Someone's cashing it in, but when and not if is really the, the thing. We never had anyone go a year and not cash it in. I wish they would. That would be kind of fun. They just kind of like, they keep putting it off and then they just forget. Yeah, why not? Why not? They hate the fans anyway. Why not disappoint them? Randy Orton, of course, gives an RKO to Riddle. Turns it up. And everyone in the arena, 
and myself watching at home go, oh, Orton turned on him. But the announcers were almost kind of half hinting, like, but what does that mean? We well, hit him with his deadly finish. It means he turned on him. But the announcers were playing it off like, oh, is he just being Randy? I'm like, what? This is not the announcer's fault. They're being fed some bullshit. Because they're not that stupid. I really uh, think the the big man in charge has lost grip on reality. And he, he does seem to have a problem with any any two people ever being friends for any period of time. Like, every tag team, every faction always turns on each other. Always, always, always. Um, I don't... It's a miracle New Day has, has made it this far. And I think one day, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, I think one day we'll be spoiled. In my opinion, if I have my druthers, I'm going off on a tangent, New Day should never turn on each other. Ever, ever, ever. That's what makes them special. One day it's going to happen. I don't know who turns on who. I don't fucking know. I don't want to know. Because I don't want to see it. Nobody wants to see it. I don't think so. What if Woods is the youngest and the smartest and he turns? Don't want to see it. What if Kofi is frustrated? He's the veteran. He's been champion. But he feels he held. Don't want to see it. Big E knows he's the biggest. He's the baddest. He thinks these two smaller guys are holding. Don't want to see it. Don't want to ever see it. Don't care. Nobody wants to see it. It's depressing. I know very well, yes, you have to have heat and make people sad and angry for a little bit. But can we have a good moment? Both shows, Raw and SmackDown, are dominated by monster heels. Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns, both won at WrestleMania. The thing with an underdog story is if your underdog, your underdog can lose nine times, but he's got to win, she's got to win that tenth one. If they just lose all ten times, you don't have an underdog. You have a loser. And right now, I feel like a giant loser for watching this program. But you at home, or maybe in your car, or you're outside, shouldn't feel like a giant loser. Even if you fly out of the ring and bump your head, on the hardest part of the ring. Okay, sometimes you reach out for the hot tag and you go ahead and make your own comeback. That's when you should quit wrestling and you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. AEW, the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. One more, sometimes you're distracting a referee and the baby face has your wrestler pinned. Then you get punched a ring apron, and you realize all the trouble you're in when it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Thank you, Bob Squad.